France is moving from intent to implementation on a generational refresh of its maritime patrol fleet, committing approximately 2.956 billion euros in the 2026 defense plan to launch Patmar Futur, the program that will succeed the Atlantique II. Rather than adopting an in-service off-the-shelf solution, Paris is doubling down on a European path centered on an Airbus A321 airframe paired with a Thales mission suite. The budget line, entered under Program 146 for 2026, signals the transition from planning to execution while leaving quantity, delivery phasing, and some configuration choices to contract award. This approach aligns with France's recurring priorities in sea control and nuclear deterrent escort, but it also reflects a desire to retain governance over software, data, and future growth in an era when open architecture and rapid spiral upgrades can define operational advantage. Industrial activity is already well underway. Airbus and Thales are working through a 24-month risk reduction and definition phase that began on February 4, 2025, incorporating aerodynamic studies, wind tunnel campaigns, and interface verification for sensors, effectors, and communications. The goal is straightforward, de-risk the path to a production decision around the end of 2026 while refining the mission suite to match French Navy concepts of operation. The selected platform leverages the A321 XLR's endurance, high-altitude cruise efficiency, and cabin volume allowing more operator consoles, server racks, and mission equipment than the outgoing ATL-2 can comfortably host. That extra space isn't just a luxury, it translates directly into higher sonobuy carriage, deeper weapon stocks on board, and headroom for later payloads without pushing the aircraft into costly structural changes. On the sensor side, program materials consistently emphasize three pillars. First is a latest-generation AESA surface search radar optimized for maritime environments, enabling wide-area detection, tracking, and classification of small targets in complex sea states. Second is a comprehensive acoustic suite for both passive and active sonobuies, underpinned by modern processing to improve detection ranges and reduce operator workload in crowded acoustic conditions. Third, distinctive in an era when many fleets have dropped it, is a tail-mounted magnetic anomaly detector to support the terminal phase of anti-submarine prosecutions. Together with refreshed electro-optics, SATCOM, and multiple data links, the suite aims to maximize coverage per sortie and compress the kill chain from initial contact to weapon release. Weapons integration will focus on lightweight torpedoes and France's future anti-ship missile, FMAN, supported by a sizable mission bay and underwing stations. The weapons roadmap is as much about governance as firepower, an open architecture backbone should make it easier to add effectors or tweak employment logic without waiting on a single vendor software cadence. Self-protection, hardening against infrared and radar-guided threats, plus cyber resilience, remains a prerequisite for persistent patrols near contested waters. France is also planning for augmented crews on very long sorties, a nod to the realities of overseeing deterrent patrol areas, providing ASW cover for carrier or amphibious groups, and conducting long-range search and rescue and fisheries enforcement in distant exclusive economic zones. Compared to the Atlantic II at Standard 6, the A321-based solution promises faster transit at altitude, greater internal volume, and higher payload margins that collectively expand both tactical options and growth potential. While exact figures for range, payload, and crew size await final configuration choices, the operational effect is clear, more buoys to seed larger patterns, more weapons available without immediate rearmament, and more processing power for sensor fusion and automated correlation. The legacy ATL-2, though upgraded, is constrained by airframe age and cabin geometry, the A321 provides a clean sheet for modern racks, cooling, power distribution, and cybersecure networks that can absorb iterative software improvements over decades. Any European program in this space invites comparison with Boeing's P-8A Poseidon, which has become the reference point for NATO and several Indo-Pacific partners. The P-8A offers a proven weapons bay, substantial sonobuoy capacity via rotary launchers, and a broad support ecosystem. 
Most Poseidon operators have foregone a tail MAD, India's P-8I is a prominent exception, trading terminal localization tools for other capabilities and CONEPS assumptions. France's design choices move in the opposite direction, keep MAD for endgame localization, pair it with a modern acoustic suite, and use the A321XLR's efficiency to maintain long on-station times at distance. In exchange, France accepts the risks inherent in bringing a new MPA standard to maturity rather than buying into a widely fielded platform. Those risks are not trivial. Systems integration always harbors schedule and cost pressure, particularly when multiple complex subsystems, AESA radar, acoustic processing, mission management, secure data links, must interoperate seamlessly over an open architecture. Airframe militarization of a commercial type also demands structural, electrical, and electromagnetic compliance work that can reveal surprises late in the test program. France's mitigation strategy hinges on the current definition phase, front-loading aerodynamic and systems testing, validating installation impacts in wind tunnels, and rehearsing software integration in labs that mirror the aircraft network. The payoff, if achieved, is a patrol jet whose major upgrades are software-led and whose hardware pathways remain unblocked by proprietary bottlenecks. Sustainment arguments weigh heavily in the A321's favor. The A320 family's global footprint offers unparalleled access to spares, engines, and maintenance know-how, which may translate into lower lifecycle costs and higher availability. Aircrew and technician training pipelines can piggyback on civil-military commonalities, reducing transition friction. For a Navy that expects to fly long, frequent missions over cold water and open ocean, availability is not an accounting detail, it is a combat multiplier. The A321XLR's commercial entry into service in late 2024 adds maturity to the propulsion and systems baseline that the military variant will inherit, even as structural reinforcements and mission kit installations differentiate the MPA. Strategically, timing matters. Undersea competition is intensifying in the North Atlantic, the Eastern Mediterranean, and across the Indo-Pacific. Russian submarine activity continues to impose surveillance demands near home waters, while Allied operations against quiet conventional submarines in choke points create additional ASW escort requirements. In this environment, France's choice to field a European solution balances alliance interoperability with sovereign control. Networking will hinge on NATO standard links and SATCOM, but mission logic, data handling, and software updates will stay within France's governance, preserving flexibility for national tasking, deterrent support, and sensitive data exploitation. Export prospects are difficult to forecast in the near term. The Poseidon's incumbency and the political-industrial ties that come with it give Boeing a durable lead in many capitals. Yet several European air arms and coast guards are reassessing fleet mixes, life cycle costs, and the benefits of open architectures. If the A321 MPA achieves the promised balance of endurance, payload, and growth, it could appeal to customers seeking a modern patrol aircraft without the full logistical and financial weight of the P-8A. In that scenario, interoperability would hinge on standards compliance and shared weapons and buoy libraries rather than platform commonality alone. Ultimately, the 2026 budget allocation is the hinge that turns a concept into a program of record. Through 2025 to 2027, Airbus as prime and fails on sensors and mission systems will refine the configuration, retire integration risks, and prepare the production shift. Tranche structure, base infrastructure, and industrial ramp-up will be settled at contract, but the strategic contours are already visible, a long-range European patrol jet designed to guard the strategic deterrent, protect carrier and amphibious groups, police expansive maritime approaches, and evolve continuously through software and modular payloads. In choosing this path, France accepts development risk in exchange for autonomy and adaptability, qualities likely to matter even more as the underwater battlespace grows busier, quieter, and harder to dominate.